Hi, I'm glad you stopped by. We have been looking at the ceiling of the 144,000. We want to know what and why and when and how and where and who. Here's a short review of what we learned about the ceiling in part one, and then we want to fill in the gaps with this study. This passage tells us how to avoid getting the mark of the beast and of his image, those stated in the negative. And all we were required to do was to give up God's Sabbath and keep the Pope's, and then we should have the mark of the beast and of his image. This next passage gives us the fact that we are now in the sealing time. I saw that Satan was now using every device in this sealing time to keep the minds of God's people from present truth and cause them to waver. Now we're given who is doing the sealing, said the angel. The third angel is binding them or sealing them in bundles for the heavenly garner. Next, we have a name for the seal, and that the seal is positively the Sabbath. In these things I saw great danger, for if the mind is filled with other things, present truth is shut out, and there is no place in our foreheads for the seal of the living God. This seal is the Sabbath. Now we are told that the sealing time is not ended yet. Then another angel was commissioned to fly swiftly to the four angels and bid them hold until the servants of God were sealed with the seal of the living God in their foreheads. And this passage confirms that the seal is the Sabbath and adds that it comes last, which implies that no other later truth is as great or as important. That truth, the Sabbath, is the seal. That's why it comes last. Now the end of the sealing time is given. I saw angels hurrying to and fro in heaven. An angel returned from the earth with the writer's inkhorn by his side and reported to Jesus that his work was done, that the saints were numbered and sealed. Then I saw Jesus, who had been ministering before the ark containing the Ten Commandments, throw down the censer. He raised his hands upward and with a loud voice said, It is done. It's appropriate, too, that we have some comforting words for parents. Don't let us neglect to pray with and for our children. He that said, Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not will listen to our prayers for them, and the seal or mark of believing parents will cover their children if they are trained up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Taking from the above review, we know positively that the Sabbath is the seal, but how does that work? The Bible has some interesting things to say on this point. Genesis 2, 2-3 And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. As good as this is, there is more in Exodus 31. It, the Sabbath, is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested 
and was refreshed. Where am I going with this? Right here. I heard those clothed with the armor speak forth the truth in great power. It had effect. I saw those who had been bound. Some wives had been bound by their husbands, and some children had been bound by their parents. The honest who had been held or prevented from hearing the truth now eagerly laid hold of the truth spoken. All fear of their relatives was gone. The truth alone was exalted to them. It was dearer and more precious than life. They had been hungering and thirsting for truth. I asked what had made this great change, and Angel answered, It is. Notice how clear that is. <laughs> it is the latter rain, semicolon, I put it in bold and red, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord, another semicolon, the loud cry of the third angel. We want to focus on this refreshing because it is placed in the center of three named items, and we have some interesting things said about it. At this point, we need to think spiritually, for God's word, the Bible, is written out in parables. Isaiah 28, For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest, wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. Terrible. Let's examine what we have just read. Tables are a figure of books. Vomit and filthiness are the lies of Satan and wicked doctrines. God will be teaching them that are moving on from the milk of childhood and growing into an adult with clear purpose to find and eat the honey of God's pure word. The recipe is given in verse 10. For verse 11, we need a cross-reference. And we have Isaiah 33:19, A people of a deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. And in the margin, the note says, ridiculous. So it could be ridiculous tongue that thou canst not understand. And this is exactly what is going on, is there are too many people that think the way we study God's word is ridiculous. Verse 12 gives a positive ID on exactly what the rest is and exactly what the refreshing is, and we can get our teeth into that one. Exodus 23, six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thine handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Notice the similarities of these words, that this being refreshed and the refreshing is, of course, the same thing. So we'll get into this. When we stop our work and take a break and rest, we get refreshed. 
We are like a battery in that, a, like a battery, we run down and need to get recharged or refreshed, which, like a battery, gives us more power, and we are energized or refreshed. Only this time it is spiritual. The Sabbath is the seal. Rest and refreshing are tightly connected with the Sabbath. We are invited to enter into his rest, to hear and learn doctrine, and be taught spiritual knowledge, which in turn gives us spiritual power to trust more and more in God and have power in faith. We become like Christ. We become ready to give the loud cry. Because we are hearing with a heart to understand, drawn by the Father to come to Christ. Christ is the Word, and it is the Word that heals our minds and hearts from sin. Now we can praise God, and we must, because if we cannot do it now, how will we do it in heaven? Now is the day of salvation. Philippians 2, in verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, because you will be called upon to heal, to teach, to reach, to give the loud cry and carry it to the world. First you need rest and be refreshed and get spiritually powered up by believing how simple all this really is. But this is the problem. There are too many people out there that are really smart. So smart they think it, it cannot be that easy. So they go on searching, leaving behind the simple plan God has laid out. It's too easy to just believe the Bible the way it reads. This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Matter of fact, they think it's ridiculous. Isaiah 30, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And ye would not. This is so important that this is where your strength is, is this resting and refreshing on the Sabbath. Jeremiah 6, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls? But they said, We will not walk therein. Matthew 11, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. This is the big issue here. It's uh, our pride so often gets in the way, and we just really need to repent of that and get that blotted out and change our characters. And this thing is huge. It is very huge because salvation is everything. Hebrews chapter 3 Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. 
Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned? whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Let us therefore fear, lest they promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. But this is what I want to point out, is that we need to believe what the word says. That's so important. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath that they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest to the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God, for he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. And we cannot pass by what the counterfeit spirit of prophecy has to say about the seal. And the reason for that is because you need to know what you're going to be faced with. I think that the loud cry will probably go forth through the Seventh-day Adventist church before it goes out to the whole world. But it, all of that may be simultaneous. I am not sure, but you will be faced with this. So having studied and understanding what the seal really is, we can readily identify the false statements in the counterfeit spirit of prophecy. In the quotation below, we first see that the Sabbath is not even mentioned. In its place is substituted an idea, one that creates a barrier against being open to truth. Because you already have the truth, you think. 
This idea accepted puts people into the same mindset as the Jewish leaders who rejected Christ. And in the same sentence, we have another false statement about the shaking. This statement implies that the shaking began in 1902 or thereabouts. But again, having studied the original authentic testimonies, we easily see the falsehood claiming to have come from God through Ellen. We place the passage which clearly identifies the beginning of the shaking as having started just prior to January 26, 1850, right here. It says the mighty shaking has commenced and is going on, and all will be shaken out who are not willing to take a bold and unyielding stand and sacrifice for God and his cause. The angel said, Think ye he will compel any to sacrifice and give up their possessions? No, no, it must be a free will offering. It will take all to buy the field. And last, the counterfeit, spirit of prophecy. Just as soon as the people of God are sealed in their foreheads, it is not any seal or mark that can be seen but a settling into the truth, both intellectually and spiritually, so they cannot be moved. Just as soon as God's people are sealed and prepared for the shaking, it will come. Indeed, it has begun already. The judgments of God are now upon the land to give us warning that we may know what is coming. Manuscript from 1902. God bless your study.